South Africa saw one rhino poached every eight hours of every single day, with 1,215 rhinos illegally killed. Another grim rhino poaching record was set for the eighth consecutive year. Now, with the Department of Environmental Affairs, who has translocated more than 100 rhinos to neighboring states through private partnerships and government initiatives, well, we now talk to the Honorable Minister of Environmental Affairs, Edna Malewa, about what more will be done this year to halt this escalating crisis. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning to your listeners, too, and your viewers. First, I want to start. The statistic says that we've been on a downward slide since 2007. Uh, numbers really escalating, more than 1,200 last year. Uh, are you happy that we've maybe made a better start this year in the fight? No, I will never be happy even with one. Even with one being killed, I will never be happy. It is indeed a serious challenge that we are faced with, especially because we know that we are fighting very uh, serious uh, criminal syndicate of the world. The syndicate that actually operates even in drug trafficking, human trafficking, and that uh, kind of uh, you know, world. Mm -hmm. And indeed, it is necessary for us to work together. We have recently uh, agreed at cabinet level, released uh, after that agreement, released an integrated approach of fighting this scourge of rhino poaching. And the reason why I actually emphasize integrated mm. is because it is necessary for us to integrate our work and to act collectively. Yeah. Because with government alone, we don't really think that it will really be helpful and we won't make it alone. So it's necessary to implement the strategy that we've put in place. What does a strategy consist of? And I'm saying strategy because mm. we've just started implementing that strategy yeah. last year. And of course, we are looking forward to many ideas that may come on board. We've recently also just uh, met uh, at the CITES level, the receiving country, user countries, yeah. and transit countries uh, that are formulating a different strategy over and above what we are implementing in South Africa as well. You mentioned CITES uh, right now, and I want to get straight in there because one of the principles that, or one of the agreements that came out of there uh, was that Mozambique had to, had to step up their side of the bargain, especially on the, on the, uh, in the Kruger Park. By the 31st of January, I think they needed to have re released a report. Uh, have they done so? And are you happy with uh, the contribution that they are making in this fight? Well, Mozambique is actually a transit country. Uh, indeed, uh, they were mentioned and they, were, they had certain things uh, that were bound to do uh, as per the decision of CITES conference that set in Thailand. Mm. They did uh, finally, after some of struggle uh, submit that report which really says that they need to do their bit they need to have their uh, laws in place they need to really up their game in terms of fighting uh, mm. this scourge of rhino poaching they have done so however we also had uh, a memorandum of understanding drafted and agreed to mm -hmm. with mozambique where we are working together and that memorandum of understanding speaks to issues uh, like for instance working together in strengthening our capacity to police and to really secure these animals of ours. Remember, Mozambique has got a problem in uh, elephant poaching. Yeah. We also have in, in rhino poaching. So the, the memorandum of understanding straddles across law enforcement to hmm. uh, real issues of uh, co uh, communities, empowerment of communities, sustainable livelihoods for those communities. But it arises from the fact that we have lower defenses between us and Mozambique. They had to remove uh, communities that were found in, mm. that found themselves in, an, in the park when the defenses were lowered. They've since begun doing so. They are doing their last bit now to remove those. And we're really working together in, in that direction. It's still not enough. We think that we can still do better. One of the buzzwords within the anti-poaching drive right now is demand reduction strategies. And, and that's working in places like Vietnam where the demand is still very high. Uh, how do you see those processes worked? It's worked in the past, in the 70s and 80s, in places like Japan and Korea. Uh, are you happy with the efforts on that front? Until such time that we really have zero uh, rhino being poached, the only then we will say we are happy. At the moment, we say, yes, we, have a, we are having a step in the right direction. Because indeed, uh, after our memorandum of understanding, which we also, similar one with Mozambique, that we have entered into with the 
uh, Vietnam. Viet Vietnamese have actually been into South Africa, two groups of theirs, the artists and the young generation, to come and, mm -hmm. you know, walk around South Africa and seeing the poached, uh, poaching levels and how poaching happened. They are now in their country working on, you know, carnival programs of, you know, educating their own society yeah. in terms of ensuring that there is a reduction. So the demand reduction with regards to uh, 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 Vietnam is being driven from that end. But not only those groups, government itself is beginning to speak out. Mm. They're strengthening their laws. And I'm saying it's a step in the right direction. Vietnam was also part of our teams, which met at CITES, mm. just a small group, uh, about how we're going to work with Interpol, with IQIC on uh, yeah. issues of policing and demand reduction. Bringing it back to South Africa, ma'am, the arrest rates in South Africa, are you happy with the way that we are following through once we've made arrests? I think there has been a great improvement indeed, I must say. If I compare the current rate of uh, prosecution, convictions in particular, because you can prosecute and not really quite successfully convict, so the rate of conviction has actually grown as, la as per last year, um, around the third quarter of the year, of mm -hmm. this financial year, in fact, uh, we were sitting at 61% of convictions, and which was really still a figure that had to be completed at the end of the year and taking stock. And I think that we are doing better. The fact that there are such high uh, conviction rates and also sentences that are mm -hmm. being passed, harsh ones, 40 years for that uh, Thai national and now recently the, you know, the, the uh, rate of... Uh, I mean, the, the many number of years that have been given, to, it's, it's really quite helpful. But not only that, even in the arrests, the fact that working with South African authorities in the Czech Republic, there could be that number of people, there's 16 or 18 arrested now recently, yeah. a very huge syndicate. And 10 of those as well here in South Africa that we've op been operating in this, amongst them, by the way, police yeah. from the Hawks, lawyers, and really, women, I mean, it's really, it's really quite shocking, but at least this is a breakthrough. We, we do think that we are going somewhere. Whether that will be a deterrent, I'm not sure still, because we still need to work harder, I think, in ensuring that this serves as a deterrent. But as I say, this, these measures will not work one in isolation from yeah. the other. It's pas a uh, uh, puzzles of a jigsaw, and we need to just get them to work together at all times. Well, ma'am, what we can say, the good news is, uh, last year, there were three times more rhino poached at the same time that we have at this time of the year. So whatever policies you are putting in place, it seems to be bearing fruit. I thank you for joining us. Thank you very much indeed.